or respectively. I'd like to acknowledge the Monroe County District Attorney, David Christine, as well as First Assistant Mike Mancuso and their entire office. The support that we received was absolutely excellent. Once those warrants were obtained, the Bureau of Emergency and Special Operations, BSO, coordinates our Special Emergency Response Team, CERT. They were selected to serve those warrants, the three search warrants and the Fugitive from Justice warrant. To define what CERT is, it's a full-time tactical team maintained by PSP to deal with high-risk warrant situations, barricades, and other incidents requiring specialized tactical training or other capabilities. From their perspective, we essentially tasked them to go out and serve a um, arrest warrant for someone accused of a quadruple murder. They're activated several hundred times a year throughout the Commonwealth. We don't typically hear of their work in a forum like this because mm -hmm. they serve the warrant, the person's taken into custody, and they go about their, their assignment. They are the ultimate professionals. It's a volunteer team. They're highly trained and highly motivated. Captain Norm Kramer over my left shoulder was assigned as the top com for the CERT activation, which means he was responsible for coordinating our tactical preparations. So tactical assets were then staged in the county, in Monroe County, uh, into the evening of Thursday, December 29th, last Thursday. And in the early hours of Friday, December 30th, those warrants were executed at the location. Mr. Koberger was taken into custody without incident. The scene was turned over to the FBI evidence response team for processing. Mr. Koberger was then turned over to the Monroe County prison where he has remained in their custody since. I'd like to thank the Monroe County Sheriff and the Stroud Regional Police Department for their support as well during the extradition process. Arrangements currently are being made to deliver Koberger back to Idaho where he can have continued due process and face these charges. So it's with that, I will turn it over to first assistant, Mike Mancuso. Thank you, Major. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Mike Mancuso with the DA. I don't know. This is just my personal opinion. Don't these guy don't don't these guy look shady to you? Like it's just my personal opinion. I'm not trying to be mean and nothing like that coming down below, but but this guy looks super shady. DA's office, the first assistant district attorney. Uh, I want to give my uh, condolences to the families of the victims um, out in Idaho uh, for their loss. And it's my sincere hope that uh, this marks a clear step in the right direction of effectuating justice for those folks. Um, my office's role was uh, relatively recent. Uh, we weren't um, advised of the presence uh, of the defendant in our county until um, only a couple days uh, before the apprehension of the defendant. Uh, but when we were told, uh, we came together and worked very closely um, with uh, Captain uh, Kramer, who did an excellent job in uh, almost like a... So these guys got involved after Kohlberger got arrested? Clockwork operation. Uh, part of uh, my duties um, were to ensure that three separate search warrants uh, were issued. Uh, those affidavits attached to those search warrants are still under seal, so I can't discuss their contents with you. Uh, but one was for the person of uh, Mr. Koberger, uh, collecting DNA and photographs, that sort of thing. One was for the uh, white Elantra vehicle, uh, which um, I understand uh, has been seized and uh, is being processed. And one was for the address, the residence itself that he was living in. So that means that this guy read the affidavit? So if this guy was the person that pushed those arrest warrants, right? And, and never mind not mentioning the counselors and stuff like that. So this guy pushed, you see, again, in my personal opinion, this guy looks shady and that face right there that you could see at this moment on the screen is a deception that's a signal of deception in that body language my problem with this whole pennsylvania situation is that 
if everything is on the seal, you didn't have the chance to read nothing. So you on the a, a, a possible false pretension, not knowing if it's a false pretension, not knowing if it's legit. You just believe in Idaho and push a arrest warrant with no type of evidence. You see that face right there? That's the face of deception. In my professional opinion, comment down below. With his family. Um, I was at the scene um, and I have to say um, that uh, uh, Major Paris and uh, Captain uh, Norm Kramer did an outstanding job in coordinating the efforts, not only of the numerous Pennsylvania State uh, Police Troopers there, but um, officers from other jurisdictions and disciplines within those jurisdictions to make this a very smooth, highly competent professional operation. Um, it is a, a quirk, apparently. It's uh, not in the norm uh, of the states I'm familiar with that Idaho does not release their probable cause affidavit in support of their arrest warrant until after uh, their defendant is uh, brought or returned to that state. Um, but having... If you ask me, that's an entrapment affidavit. In Pennsylvania, needed to ensure Kohlberger's rights as a Pennsylvania resident. Kohlberger's constitutional rights that it don't matter if Idaho has sealed affidavits and whatnot, the bus stop in Pennsylvania. That means that Kohlberger being a resident of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania state needed to protect his rights and make sure that Idaho come correct. Because if you come in to take one of our residents to your state, blame for whatever you blame him in the paperwork by rules and regulation in the paperwork you have to have something there like they said without benefit of the doubt for them to do what they did a warrant for an arrest a blind warrant for an arrest trusting Idaho because I know they did not check nothing to make sure the Kohlberger's rights were protected as a defendant, as an alleged suspect, as a resident of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania needed to make sure the Idaho come correct for them to even take any steps to to produce an arrest for Brian Cover. And this is not just like complicated at all. This is very simple. This is just crispy clean. You better have something for us to arrest one of our residents. Especially like they mentioned, it's an international case. In this press conference, they made it clear that this is a international matter. The whole world is watching. So, I think we have a lupo that if Ann Taylor pay attention and realize that Pennsylvania didn't have no facts to arrest Brian Kohlberger, to have an arrest warrant and search and seizure of his white Helantra, and realize that all these process was illegal, I believe that Brian Kohlberger, if Ann Taylor is doing her job, she could get him out even quicker than whatever she had going on right now in court. I don't think that they'll have to wait not even a month 
if she actually present this in court and be like, judge, how can we have a person arrested at this day today when the people that arrested him was Pennsylvania blindly because Idaho didn't share no details. Brian Kohlberger got arrested by the state of Pennsylvania trusting Idaho without looking at nothing. Comment down below. Uh, read those documents and the uh, sealed affidavits of probable cause. I definitely believe that one of the main reasons the defendant chose to waive extradition and hurry his return back to Idaho was the need to know what was in those documents. This is important so right here. Let's play this back. In support of their arrest warrant until after other jurisdictions and disciplines within those jurisdictions to make this a very smooth, highly competent professional operation. Um, it is a, a quirk, apparently. It's uh, not in the norm uh, of the states I'm familiar with that Idaho does not release their probable cause affidavit in support of their arrest warrant until after uh, their defendant is uh, brought or returned to that state. Um, but having uh, read those documents and the uh, sealed affidavits of probable cause, I definitely believe that one of the main reasons the defendant chose to waive extradition and hurry his return back to Idaho was the need to know what was in those documents. Um, so, so did he just say that he read the document? With that Idaho does not release their probable cause affidavit in support of their arrest warrant until after uh, their defendant is uh, brought or returned to that state. So he said he, he said that Idaho don't share no information even with them. But then in the same breath, he said that he read the paperwork. Um, but having uh, read those documents and the uh, sealed affidavits of probable cause, I definitely. So he just said that he read them. So that means whatever he saw, he believed that it was enough for him to push an arrest warrant and seat you of the vehicle. I believe that one of the main reasons the defendant chose to waive extradition and hurry his return back to Idaho was the need to know what was in those documents. So this right here could be the reason why Kohlberger's keep the extradition process is because someone advised him that the sooner you get back, the sooner as you know what's the reason why you got arrested. And if you ask me, this is entrapment. Listen, man, in my personal professional opinion, this is an entrapment. This is an entrapment. How can this guy get a, a, a search and seizure and a, a arrest warrant with no information? Because again, if he read the affidavit for probable cause, he would see the same thing that Ann Taylor saw. No connection. So how come that this guy get a warrant for an arrest with what the defense called a no burger? This is why I don't believe that this guy read nothing. I don't believe that. Just my personal opinion. I don't believe this guy read anything. I believe this guy didn't have no access of nothing that he just needed to trust Idaho. And Pennsylvania acted and reacted trusting the no burger of Idaho. Um, so that's a, a significant development. Um, beyond that, Looking at the, the scope of the, uh, the situation and the ties this defendant has to my county, 
Um, I uh, would uh, hold our office at the disposal of the Idaho authorities um, to help facilitate a complete uh, background investigation into the defendant, um, both uh, activities prior to the murders occurring within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and his activities after the murders in Pennsylvania. So we stand ready to assist with that effort on an ongoing basis. Thank you. Which on the background check seems that he didn't have no no police contact, only a 911 call that he made uh, to the park, uh, to the 911 system to get the park rangers to open the gates of a park that, that he, um, I believe he was jogging or something. So it was really no burger about Kohlberger in Pennsylvania at all that actually got confirmed. 